hello again everyone. Um, this is Ardermis. I have had numerous questions lately on how to generate random numbers. Uh, random numbers are very important for uh, most games, so um, some people would like to know how to create random maps with them, and other people would like to know how they can be used uh, for a combat system and things like that. So I will go ahead and show you how to do that today. It's really surprisingly easy, but there are a few things that can hang you up when it comes to random numbers. So I'll try to cover those here um, as quickly as possible. Go ahead and go down to the end, and the first thing we're going to do is create a function uh, to return a random value. So I'm going to do private function. I'm just going to call it rand, and we're going to pass it to uh, two values. So I'll do by val uh, a starting integer. So I'll do int start as an integer. Then for my next value, I'm going to do just an ending integer. So int end is what I'll call it as an integer. All right. So to do this, the first thing we'll do is create a <coughs> variable as a new random. So I'm going to say uh, dim rnd as new random. And uh, then we're going to dim a dim an integer to store that value and then return the next value. So I'll call this one my random number R and D no as integer equals R and D a random class dot next and this returns the next uh, random integer in line. Um, the default seed for the random number is time based, so it's actually based on your uh, system clock which is ticking away and I think it grabs the milliseconds from that which shift rather quickly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just pick a range here from uh, int start and then int end plus one and the reason I used uh, plus one here is because it actually doesn't return the last value uh, so if we did uh, say 0 to 8, uh, it would never return an 8 for some reason. I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, so essentially it'll be 0 to 9 and it will return an 8. But <clears throat> the way that we're doing this, um, we can actually do 0 to 8 here and it'll add that extra um, value. So it kind of fixes it for us. And then all we're going to do is return random number. Well, hey, that was pretty simple. Um, so now we need to apply this somehow. I think the first thing I'll do is show you how you can uh, create a random map based upon these values. Um, and I'll show you uh, one of the little uh, catches here that can get us in trouble. So uh, let's go ahead and do this next. So let's jump over to our form and add a button. I'm just going to call this uh, CMD random. And I'll give it the text uh, random map. And so hopefully, when we click this button, it'll generate a completely randomized map. So, double clicking on that gives us our source for that button, and what we're going to do is dim rnd, just like we did before on this, and I'll tell you why we're not using this function here in a second. As new random. Alright. So we're going to use a for loop. Um, my map is Let's see here, where did I set my map with? 
So my map variables, uh, you know, my map height and width are both 100. I need to loop through every coordinate on that map uh, to set a value to create a random map. So I'm going to say 4x equals 0 to 100, or my map width if you're using a variable. Um, <clears throat> I can also do my y coordinate for y equals 0 to 100. Now, the reason I'm creating a new random here instead of using my random function, um, what I've found is that these loops, you know, if there's no graphics being drawn or anything like that, they can complete, uh, you know, they can loop through like tens or hundreds of thousands of times per second, which is way faster than the milliseconds on your clock. So it actually won't give your, uh, random function time to catch up so we actually have to force it uh, to grab a new value every second uh, essentially this would loop through and loop through and the variable would stay the same so you might get you know a whole bunch of zeros or uh, or it might just give you a random number every you know every time the milliseconds change so you might get several of the same value I hope that makes sense I kind of confusing the issue there I think uh, anyway we're gonna basically duplicate what we did up here except <clears throat> each time we go through the loop we need to force it to grab a new uh, value whatever's next in the chain um, from that seed instead of allowing it to use that variable um, dim random number as integer equals rnd dot next and for this uh, let's see since I have eight different map tiles I'm going to say 0 to 9 since we're not using our random function like I would like to then I'm going to say <coughs> map x and y. Uh, I think I. I don't think I'm using z on this one. I can't remember if I am or not. We'll see if it chokes here. Looks like it has uh, two commas in there. Equals my random number. Okay. So as it loops through here, zero, one, two, three. You know, it's gonna go through each coordinate and set a random map value. Um, I guess we can go ahead and test that. What you'll find is that this is probably not um, the most practical usage for our randoms, but uh, one way that it could be useful is to generate uh, terrain like this, where we have a whole bunch of different grass type tiles and uh, we want to establish a default terrain randomly. That's probably a good way to do it, but what we'll get, since we're using all of the tiles in our list, is something like this. Now, as you can see, it is random, and it's uh, doing its job quite well, but again, it's not very <laughs> useful. So, uh, what we could do is something like come down here and say, well, if our random number is um, say let's see my go up to my source rectangles here say uh, flower so if it's five or one or let's see I'm gonna do two that's a passable tree too so I'll say if random number equals five or random number let's see whoops talking and typing at the same time doesn't work for me equals two then um, go ahead and populate that value else perhaps set a default value of um, our grass tile which is zero <coughs> so 
What we should get is a mix of uh, these trees and flowers, um, whereas you know the bulk of the tiles will be zero, or our grass tile. So this would be a good way to uh, set a random and default terrain. That works pretty good. I mean, naturally, you could in you know create a whole bunch of logic to say, well, you know, if there's a if a flower tile is pasted, then uh, maybe we should populate all the squares around that tile as well, so you get blocks, or you know, you can set up different routines like that. Um, so I didn't save that, so we can still use our map. Um, next up. I'll show you how uh, the random numbers could be used for something like uh, a combat system. Um, now we're not going to get into uh, how to create the combat system, that's kind of up to you and how you want to use the graphics and stuff, um, but I'll show you how, how these can be applied to something like that and uh, that should be good for today. All right. So we'll go back to our form and oh grab another button I'm gonna put this one on the side because I know I have kind of an open area over here and I'm just gonna do something like CMD attack and give it the name call it attack and I will double click on it to go back to my code and we'll just, uh, this time we'll use our function that we created here. Since, you know, this is going to activate on a click. There's no way you're going to be clicking, you know, 100,000 times per second. So you're not going to be, uh, you know, outdoing the system clock. So I'll dim RND as integer equals, and I'm going to call my function rand going to give it a, oh, how about a 0 to 9. Now remember that we don't have to worry about our, you know, adding 1 to that value like we did up here because uh, we're calling it in the function. The function's automatically going to add that 1 to it. So this is literally 0 to 9, not 0 to 8. And then we'll do something like, oh, how about if dmg equals zero, then, oops, not sure what I did, what it, <laughs> okay. I, my brain was going in two different directions here. I was, I was calling this dmg because it was uh, my damage, right? Um, then call a message box. Say, so this would be a miss. Let's say, I'll swish, no clang. You missed, and I'll just give that a okay only, and title just for fun. Else if. DMG equals 9, our maximum value, then how about message box critical hit, wait, <laughs> you deal space and call our uh, random Instead of using the, D the DMG, we want to add damage because it's a critical hit. So I'm going to do something like random um, 5 to 8 times 2. So it'll give us a 10 to 16 damage. And points of damage. Just for giggles, you know. Maybe CRLF. 
that's a line feed our carriage return yay the bards they love us Okay, only just because I'm crazy. All right, and otherwise, we'll just go ahead and do our message box. You attack. The wretched vermin with your battle axe for and our damage and points of damage. Okay, only. So, it's pretty self-explanatory. If we roll a zero, we missed. If we roll a nine, it's a critical hit. Our standard damage range is going to be one to eight, and it'll just capture this. If we get a critical, instead of just capturing the base damage, we're gonna take a random check, calling our function again, going from five to eight, so uh, 10 to 16, because it'll be times two. So we created a little uh, combat system. Now you could capture the hit point, you know, subtract the damage from a hit point uh, variable. It's really easy. So you attack the wretched vermin for eight points of damage. Yay! Do it again. Critical hit. You deal 16 points of damage. So you could do that and just keep hitting it. See how many tries it takes to miss four points of damage, seven points of damage. So you could have like a, you know, hit point uh, graph or a number or something over here indicating how much damage you've taken from your total pool. And you could use the same thing to do uh, healing. So, you know, instead you just run a random number and tack it onto your hit points. So really that's, that's all there is to it. Pretty simple stuff. Um, you know, that's random numbers for you. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys have a good day. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.